Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we're going to wrap up our existing missions, a dual orbital scanner, a dress scanner, and then bring the Ike Station probe back. I don't know if I want to do this Kerbin to Duna window since I'm going to throw in real solar system out of the blue and see what happens. But uh, first of all, let's spend some of the science. We've got 1,010 uh, science and we're going to... Well, if we're going to toss in real solar system, we probably need the bigger engines and, and the bigger tanks, right? Uh, so maybe that should be... and maybe nuclear propulsion. Uh, so those might be helpful. I think, yeah, I think that would be a good thing to do. Um, I was probably aiming for stuff down here originally. Yeah, maybe not so much down here. Ion engines would be nice. I mean, they take a lot of time, but if I'm not putting real realism overhaul in, they don't take nearly as much time as the real thing, so not too bad, actually. Uh, very expensive, of course, but could be used on some sort of bus, um, some sort of transfer craft. Um, requires all, though. Requires unmanned tech, so... Let's see, if we unlock that, that's 850 down there. And then maybe 850 up there. Well, that's basically all our science. If we decide to get this, that's an interesting KIS inventory thing. Uh, this has the tanks. It doesn't have the very largest tanks, but it has 3.75 meter ones. And then this which has these engines. Okay, uh, I think that's the plan. So I'll get unmanned tech. I'll get ion propulsion. Breakthrough, we now have access to xenon gas in some sort of processing thing. And large volume containment and very heavy rocketry. So, yep, we're doing well. And let us proceed with our missions. Okay, so here we are with this probe trying to get it into orbit around Tylo. And we will proceed. Communication is spotty. 1%, <laughs> you know. Well, we do what we can. Now we're going to do this burn with this probe, but then we have to turn to the Drez scanner, which is entering Drez SOI. So basically with these missions, I'm uh, sort of satisfied that I've, you know, come to grips with Kerbalism. The reason being that with crewed missions, you know, sending a crewed mission out to Jewel, they'd be able to fix stuff. And so, I mean, in a way, it'd be more difficult because of life support and all of that. And we've seen the radiation issue, which, you know, I'm not entirely sure how to deal with except for using that cheaty sort of hitchhiker can. Uh, sick bay. Ah, we need to use the uh, backup propulsion. The main propulsion system malfunctioned. The interesting thing about real solar system is that to get to the moon in real solar system takes more effort than uh, getting to Tylo and coming back. So um, it's got to be an interesting challenge. I've never actually sent a mission to Earth's moon with the stock parts. So that's sort of why I'm looking forward to that, because I've never done that before. I've gotten into orbit around Earth with the stock parts, of course. Otherwise, you know, as far as crippled missions to the dual system, I've done most of these things before. So doing them again wasn't going to... I, I've got a basic sense of how this all works. And it's going to be much more interesting to scale up and see the struggles there. Especially as we get more powerful parts. And if, I mean, right now I don't need them. <laughs> so uh, I just simply do not need those parts for anything but like an EVE landing and return mission. Don't even suggest that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to do it. That's just frustration. I know, ISRU, yes, but... I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. But uh, yeah, other than that, you know, I think Real Solar System will provide the interesting challenge that I seek. 
And it's also where I eventually want to use Kerbalism. Okay, let's see if that did what I wanted it to do. Okay, well, a polar orbit would be great for this. So I can do the surface scanning. And that will be an easy orbit to make. But we can't do that yet. We need to focus on DREZ. Okay, here we are with the DREZ scanner and its survey scanner is already deployed. Uh, communication is fine, 65%, but the margins on the Delta V are tight. And as far as systems are concerned, uh, this still seems to be working, which is good, because I don't think we had a backup propulsion system on this. I don't see the land engines. Okay, so... Let's just hope it holds out for the next day. I mean, in general, if you're concerned about grasping real solar system, you just have to think of the moon as Tylo and like getting to Earth orbit as like getting to Joule. Um, it's actually more than getting to Joule. It takes about 3000 meters per second more than getting to Joule. But in principle, you know, basically you can think of you have to get into dual orbit to do anything and then you've got basically the scale of things about right and then the moon is like Tylo after that except uh, uh, Tylo has much more gravity Tylo has a lot more gravity and I expect that for the time being a lot of our activities will be between the earth and the moon okay inclination seems okay yeah that'll be fine uh, that periapsis is too low, though. It's gotten super duper quiet, I feel. And I think that's because nobody ever goes to dress. <laughs> uh, there's Eve, there's Kerbin. Uh, there's Moho. You can sort of see them. Hey, there's Jewel, even. They're all... All of the other planets are, like, on the opposite side of the system, as far away from Drez as they can get. Okay, where is Drez? I can't see it anywhere. It's got to be... There it is. Jeez. It's like hiding and trying to sneak up on me. Okay, we better check communications. Um, that's probably not... Is that really the line back? Okay, it is. Okay, that should remain fine as we do the burn. God, it really makes it look like this is far out, huh? Hmm. For some reason, Smart ASS is totally not working. Did that go bust? Can Kerbalism kill Mechjeb? I don't remember it saying it could do that. We are right over the pole. We should be doing science. Transmit data. Did I have action grouped? No. Observe mystery goo. That's worthless. Shoot. We'll have to, like, retrieve it for that to work. Oh, that thermometer looks completely different. Okay, we are in orbit. Is that already a good enough orbit for the scan to happen? Let's see. Okay, um, 690 it needs to be. Okay, then that's fine. Okay, uploading data. We did that, 60 science added. Okay, and well, I guess we could check the overlay. Mostly interested in ore. Okay, well, there's some ore. 70% cutoff. Nothing over 80%, but uh, we've got some ore here. It's not hopeless. And partly I'm wondering what is going to happen with uh, these scans and these satellites when we change to real solar system. Where will they end up? It'll be an interesting thing to find out. 
Drez the Mysterious. Always so shadowy. Oh, did we... Was the previous one already high over Drez? Maybe. So how low do we have to go for low over Drez? Well, let's go to Periapsis and see. Well, that's below 32. Still high over. Okay, well, we're going to have to get lower. We can't quite land this, unfortunately. We don't have enough Delta V for that. But I just want you to know that I thought about that. <laughs> okay, that's under 20. Okay, finally near Drez. Good. And Mr. Eagle's still useless. Yep. Well, I guess we should get no, no, get it. Who knows? Who knows? All right. I think our business here is at an end. Let's go back to Jewel. Okay, we are just basically hoping for communication to hold out while we get this into orbit around Tylo. And we will be approaching Tylo in six days. It's all coming together. Uh, engine malfunction on Ike Station. Not our concern right now. The nice thing about a station is it's stationary, so hopefully that wasn't even a necessary engine at this point. No, uh, we've got, uh, yeah, Jewel is eclipsing the sun. This is bad timing for that. Okay, and of course we have lack of communication because Kerbin is in the direction of the sun. Oops, and so we had a ghillie probe issue, but that's not a big deal. But yeah, oh, oh wait, no, no, we, we should be recharging. I mean, Tylo, we can see that Tylo is nice and bright. So yeah, everything is good. Okay, we are in Tylo SOI again. I think we've done all the science we need to do. This is just about doing the orbital scan. And we are at a good inclination for that scan. Okay, let's begin capturing here. Since we're on the backup propulsion, it might take a little bit of time. Smart ASS is working fine here. Still 1% signal strength. Lots busted on here, an antenna, the main engine, the solar panel, this solar panel. Still, redundancy worked out for us. Let's see, what altitude do we need to be? 1,500. Now, returning the Ike Station probe is going to be a bit complicated, if I recall. We're going to have to get somebody to help it out. Okay, we can shut down there, perform orbital survey, or... Well, uh, pretty high concentrations of ore in certain locations. We got 80% patches, not 90% though. Overall, it's only 4.4%. Uh, Drez had 5.1%. Okay, well, uh, that is done with the bare minimum of communications. And yeah, this has done its job. Let me take a look at that Ike Station probe and see what shape it's in. Might be in worse shape after the 308 days of its trip. Okay, well, what's interesting about this situation is that we still have this docking port here. And we don't have the parachute, so that's a problem. But we still have the docking port. So maybe we should fix up a mission that can intercept this, dock with it, with parachutes, without sending a Kerbal up necessarily. And see if we can do that instead. It'll be quite an intercept, though considering it's coming in like this and polar but yeah maybe 
that's probably better than having a vessel that carries a Kerbal to replace the parachute, though that's feasible as well. The, the automated one can carry more fuel and it'll be better able to intercept it. Carrying a Kerbal always means that it's got to be heavier. We can make it lighter if we just uh, have it be probe controlled. Anyway, let me go to the VAB and see what we can do for this. Okay, well, I've decided I really don't want to take any chances with this. So we've got this sort of recovery probe thing with a heat shield and parachutes, solar panels, RCS for docking, RCS fuel, regular fuel for two ant engines, and of course comms. But it doesn't have to dock alone because we've got the poodles, uh, sorry, the terrier stage here, extra RCS, extra solar panels, extra comms, and uh, extra thrusters just in case the terrier engine fails. So this can all dock together and then this stage will separate off so that that can uh, proceed with its business. And then the launcher itself has uh, two bobcats and then a poodle here. And so that's enough Delta V to not only launch to orbit but also get to the moon potentially. So that's a lot of Delta V. Hopefully that'll be enough for any maneuver that we need to do to get to this. We just have to remember to get uh, launch it into polar orbit. That's, that's one thing. Uh, and into the right polar orbit. Uh, so we're gonna wait the 300 days or so and with our luck maybe the probe is, uh, this is a pretty low thrust weight ratio off the pad by the way, I do know that. Um, maybe other things will break on the probe that will make it useless, I don't know. We will see, but I think this is as robust as I need and uh, more than I need probably. We will find out, but yeah, yeah, I definitely want the probe back. Okay, so Ike Station Probe is now 11 days away, which means it should be in Kerberness OI, maybe not. But all I wanted to do was limit how long our our probe was going to have to wait in orbit so it doesn't have any problems. Um, there's Ike Station Probe, if we focus on it. Okay, it hasn't entered Carbon SY, but I think this is a good time to launch, maybe. Oh, but I don't think its orbit is going to appear. Well, we'll see on the launch pad. I'll bring it out to the launch pad and we'll see whether its orbit appears so that we can line up with it. If not, uh, there might be a mech jet way to do that, but I don't want to bother with that right now. Um, yeah, if not, we'll just wait until it gets into Carbon SOI. Okay, yeah, if we target the Ike Station probe, we can see its approach, which is, com uh, that's escape. So it's coming in like this, going up, so we're going to have to head north to meet up with it. Okay, that should be good enough. Nighttime launch, need my windows. Okay, here we go. Just placing this into orbit. Maybe I should have a second one. I mean, I really don't want to mess this up, but this should do it, right? Anyway, launch. Because of the low thrust weight ratio, we'll go up for a bit and then gradually tilt northward while I'm at it. We should definitely say heading zero there. Though I probably want to shade it a little bit retrograde just to get rid of our orbital velocity. I thought about putting fins because while we're trying to... Heading negative one, I don't quite like that. I prefer it goes into the 300s rather than say negative one. I do want this to try and rendezvous early so that we have potentially another opportunity if I mess this up. Okay, Poodle. And this is the new stock revamp version of the Poodle. Um, though I, I guess Real Plume, I need to fix Real Plumes for it then. It looks like uh, the real plume is still the two nozzle version. 
Sock revamp needs to patch, uh, have a patch for real plume. Let's see, uh, well, roughly there. Close. Shouldn't be too bad. It says ascending node 1.3 degrees, so if that holds true, that's a pretty good difference considering it's not even in system yet. Okay, fairing separation. Close. Sorry, uh, not stock revamp, restock. Restock was the mod name. Mixing up with Vens. Oh, 6.9 degrees? That's not nice. Well, uh, it's a fair enough standby position anyway. We really want to zero out the inclination because Otherwise, we won't be able to see encounters earlier on. So we have a tangency there. But what we would really like to do is try and hit it, oh, somewhere over, not that side, this side. Oh, no, I don't want the periapsis one. I mean, that won't necessarily be too late or anything, but still. 3.6 kilometers relative speed, 1,700 and... Okay, well, you know... That's going to be tough. I think this is probably too extreme. Well, this is a little bit before periapsis right here. And that's a good relative speed. 1.5 kilometers, 609.5 meters per second. And I think that should work. Well, let's hope. Okay, well, let me just add that alarm just in case. Probably won't give us a whole lot of time between there and periapsis. Let me just jump back to the probe to see its state. Well, it's got full communications. It's charged up. Nothing else seems to be broken. We see its maneuver, but we don't really see this intersect point. 13 days, 3 hours, 11 minutes, it says right there. And then here is 13 days, 3 hours, and 17 minutes. So it just gets us 60, uh, so, sorry, 6 minutes ahead of time. That's fine. I mean, it's not like this is dipping into the atmosphere or anything. It's a safe altitude. But we certainly won't have a second chance to, well, I mean, it depends. yeah, I don't think we're going to have a second chance. It'll have to be this one. Let's hope it all works out. Okay, so our probe rescue probe has a 0.12 degree relative inclination, which is great. And this approach should not be too taxing, so we just have to wait. And of course, continue to recharge, that'll be important, but we sure have enough solar panels for that. And I have enough mob propellant to do a pretty quick rendezvous, hopefully. I can waste RCS as I please, I think. And on top of that, we can still control the target, so we can have it turn to face us. That'll be easier. In other news, while I was time warping, I got the message that the Sentinel Infrared Telescope has done 15 out of 16 already. So... If it doesn't do the 16th while we're doing this, then we'll just uh, time warp until it finishes that off, and then we'll have completed that contract too. Hopefully, assuming, you know, no other parts on it go bad. It lost the solar panel, I think. Okay, that's close enough. Let's do this and hope we are not being lied to by the maneuver node system. After all, we plotted this while it wasn't even in system, so... So I have to cross your fingers. Then again, delta V-wise, it's got enough to... This is the wrong probe. It's got enough to... I can switch like this. Uh, correct if necessary, because it's got 3,000 meters per second, I think. Yeah, 3,351. Though some of that we wanted to use to help get the target into orbit. So... We will see. Okay, yes, we are at that maneuver. Taking a look at that closest approach distance. 
Okay, that's good enough, 1.5 kilometers. All right, in one day, huh? Well, I hope it'll count for the contract if we dock this to the target and bring it down. Sometimes I'm not 100% sure how the contracts are going to take a certain situation. Pretty sure the terrier is fairly vigorous about its burn. Yeah, it can cut that difference pretty quickly. Okay, but this engine first. Alright, separation. Terrier. Are we past periapsis? Did I do it the wrong way around? We're past periapsis, aren't we? Why? How did I manage this? How did I get the wrong one? Gosh darn it. I thought we were going to meet up with it prior to periapsis. But we are certainly going up now. Well, one reason I packed so much Delta V is in case we met up with it after periapsis and therefore needed to do a serious retro burn to get into orbit around Kerbin. Okay. Uh, I didn't really want it to transfer info, but since the probe core is up here, I suppose it's all right. This is a little bit tall now, though, to be honest. I don't know how good this is, but um, anyway, first things first, let's make sure it's in a safe orbit. How is this fuel even being used? The heat shield should prevent that, right? Not to mention the decoupler. I didn't set cross feed to be on. Yeah, cross feed isn't on. Oh, shoot. The backup propulsion is firing? What? No, that's not active. Oh, oh, the probes engines are still on. I see. Well, considering how precarious this looks, we certainly want to slow down as much as possible before coming into the atmosphere to avoid heat. All right, that's the end of that stage. Communication should be fine. So let's carefully decouple this off. All right, so now it's just this. And what I want to know is if we do activate these guys, uh, do they actually provide Delta V? It seems that way. So the heat shield is not in their way, technically. Okay. Well, we'll go to Apoapsis. Well, uh, I want to bring the orbit down. So first we'll go to Periapsis, bring the orbit down, and then we'll uh, dip into the atmosphere. And as much as I would like to get to the ground on the daylight side, I would actually like to splash down even more rather than potentially hit mountains, so we'll see. Not that my history of planning these sorts of things has been particularly good. We could do something like that and that could end up pretty close to the KSC actually. But we don't have that much Delta V. Well, we have the RCS thrusters. I believe that should be good enough from this altitude. Okay, well, just in case, let's um, arm the parachutes now. Here we go. It's been a long mission. I'll make the surface retrograde command first. On the off chance we randomly lose communication when I retract all these things. We are slowing down. 
I'm gonna lay off trying to control anything. We're gonna have plasma blackout. And there it is. And it looks like we're through as far as the heat is concerned. And we've got communications through the KFC. I don't know how long that's going to last. Horizon is going to be an issue eventually. We are here. So not too far away actually. Okay, we have parachute deployment. A little bit awkward to have them coming out from down here. When they fully deploy we'll find out exactly how awkward. I don't know if extending it. No, okay, it would destroy it. Okay, well, we will lose communication eventually. Mm. I'm gonna dump what fuel I've got. And that's that. We still have communication for now. Maybe I have a satellite going overhead? Not sure. There's sure no land in view. Maybe on the horizon there. Okay, full parachute deployment. As expected, it's causing us to go nose first. So not the best thing for our probe at the top there, right? <laughs> but it's fairly slow. Hopefully not a bad impact thing. I don't dare jettison the heat shield, by the way, in case it hits us. That's a bit faster than I thought it would be. Hmm. Spinning was producing better effects. Hopefully that little parachute on the nose can help, or this structural part, which doesn't really matter. I just don't want the science or the probe core to be damaged. Oh. Okay. Phew. Okay, recover vessel before anything horrible happens. Does that fulfill the contract? Well, we got science. That's important, of course. Not as much science as I would like, but still. Um, well, we got all sorts of world firsts that I didn't really check. Enter entering orbit around Drez and Tylo and things. Returned home from flyby of Ike, so it says that. Um, that was the Bobcat stage. Explore Ike contract seems to be done. Okay, so the only contract we have left is the map 16 asteroids, and I am going to time warp and see when that last asteroid gets mapped. With luck before the end of the year. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Finished mapping suitable asteroids around Kerbin, and it is done. That contract is complete, giving us 2.673 million and a lot of science. So we have completed all the things, and we will see next time how real solar system works. Don't worry, if it turns out it's horrible, I can always jump back to this version, and we'll continue like this. But uh, we have cleaned everything out. We've got a lot of funds. We've got uh, some science to spend. I won't spend it just yet. I think I'll wait until after we see what changes real solar system wreaks. And of course the reason I'm doing that is because Kerbalism does have a real solar system configuration. So I want to see how and if that works. Uh, I know that people are involved in trying to make Kerbalism realism overhaul compatible, but that's an extra step. And once uh, those efforts are complete, I'll look forward to testing those out, but that's later on. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, with this great success, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.